ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sometimes you just don't realize what a good buddy one of your friends is until he's away for a while. Maybe he's home from school with a cold or something. You look at his empty desk in class and, gee, you really miss him. Well, here's something real nice you can do for him. Take over a big, cheery Betty Crocker yellow cake. The kind that says, hurry back soon, we think you're great. A cake like this, of course, just has to be perfect. And you can be sure it will be when it's made with Betty Crocker's yellow cake mix. Your mom will love to bake it. Or you can be a chef and bake it yourself. Any guy can turn out a perfect cake with this mix. All the special things are right in the package. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. And wait till he tastes that first slice. Mmm, a real He-Man every crumbs delectable Betty Crocker yellow cake. Bake one. It's fun. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Silver! Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, rode the trail bordering the Silas Biggs Ranch. As he rounded a bend, Dan saw a pony grazing near the trail. A small boy was throwing a stick and calling to a big collie to retrieve it. When the boy saw Dan approaching, he quickly ran to the dog, took hold of a trailing rope attached to his collar, then stood beside the pony waiting. Ho, 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 Victor, ho, ho. Say, that's a fine collie you have. What's his name? His name's Rover. I'm Terry Biggs. He isn't really my dog, but I sure wish he was. He belongs to Mr. Norris at the next ranch. Oh. Well, he seems to like you a lot. He does, don't you, Rover? <laughs> Daddy doesn't want Rover around our ranch. He says it bothers the cattle, and it'll shoot Rover if he comes there again. Oh, I'm sure he really didn't mean that, Terry. Yes, he did. Daddy's awful strict. He told me to take Rover home and tell Mr. Norris to keep him there. What's your name? Dan Reed. Do you live around here? No, I'm staying with friends. Do you like dogs? <laughs> of course, Terry. I like dogs and horses a lot. So do I. But Daddy says dogs are a nuisance. And he doesn't like Rover at all. Well, that's too bad. You seem to have a lot of fun together. Oh, we do. Rover comes looking for me every morning. But he can't come anymore. Maybe you can go and see him. Nope. Daddy is mad at Mr. Norris because he won't get rid of Rover. <sighs> I better be going now. But I hope I'll see you again, Dan. I like you. I'm glad you do, Terry. I'm sure I'll see you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, Dan. Come on, Victor. The following day, Cy Biggs and his foreman, Pete, were riding across the range. Well, it should be time for the roundup, Pete. Hey, hey look. That Norris dog is headed again. Come on, get it there. Get it, get it. Come on. Get out of here, you mutty. Hey, I think a bullet grazed him. Look at him go. He's scared to death. Holy, oh, 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 oh. Hold on. Too bad I didn't get him once and for all. Maybe that'll scare him into staying off my range. It might cause plenty of trouble, boss, if you kill that dog. Norris can get plenty tough. Well, we can get tougher. 
I'm sick of that yapping mutt and of Norris's longhorns straying onto my land. Let you get it there. Get That evening, Hank Norris and one of his men dismounted in front of the Biggs Ranch House. Oh, 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 oh there. Steady. I want to talk to you, Cy Biggs. Then start talking, Norris. I'm listening, but not for long. My collie came home with a bullet graze on his side. One of my men said he saw you shoot at him. And what if I did? Too bad my bullet only grazed the ornery mutt. I should have killed him. By thunder, if you had, you'd answer to me. Look, don't come here threatening me, Hank Norris. If you want trouble, I'll see that you get plenty of it. I've put up with a lot from you. I'll meet any trouble you want to bring. I've let your cattle use the water hole in my property up to now. But I have a good mind to fence it off. What? Now Why? get off my property. You, you... And as for that dog of yours, if I see him annoying my cattle again, I'll make sure my aim is better. Now get! The next morning, Dan Reed again met Terry near the ranch. The boy told Dan of overhearing the argument between his father and Hank Norris, and of his fear that harm would come to the dog Rover. Later, Dan rode to camp and told the Lone Ranger and Tonto what he had heard. That day at noon dinner, Terry spoke hesitantly to his father. Daddy, uh, I... uh, Well, what is it, son? Speak of him. May I go over to Mr. Norris's to see Rover? May I, Daddy, please? No. You forget that dog, Terry. If I ever find out you went to the Norris spread, I'll give you a good strap, and you understand? Yes, Daddy. Yeah. Hey, Pete, uh, one of the hands saw that dog on the range again early this morning. Uh And after I told Norris to keep him tied up. Well, I reckon Hank Norris don't like taking orders from anybody, boss. Well, come on, Pete. We got something to do. Hmm. What you got in mind? We'll ride to the water hole and measure for a fence, that's what. I put up with enough from Norris. Macro, boss. Hank and his men will come gunning for us if you put up a fence there. Let him come. Steady. Easy, steady, boy. Come on. Get up, get up. A short time later, while Terry lay sobbing on his bed in his room at the ranch house, he heard a sound outside the open window. <laughs> That's Rover. <laughs> Rover, you shouldn't have come. It'll kill you. I'll climb through the window. <laughs> you nod your roof. But if, if they find you here... But I won't let them. Come on, I'll get my pony. Nobody saw it, Rover. You follow me, and we'll go where you'll be safe. <laughs> Steady, Brownie. Easy, boy. Come on, Brownie. <laughs> That afternoon, Dan Reed was again riding the trail near the Biggs Ranch when he saw a group of riders coming toward him. Dan pulled to one side and stopped to let them pass. Oh, hold back there, oh boy. Howdy. Hello there. Hi. Mr. Norris, the wagon was unloading posts and wire near the water hole. Yeah, that means Cy Biggs is carrying out his threat. We'll keep them from putting up that fence no matter what happens. Get up there. Get up. I'd better go tell the Lone Ranger and Tano. This means there's going to be a range war. Come on, Victor. Dan met the Lone Ranger and Toto near the camp and told them what he had heard. Toto, we must try to stop them before someone is killed. Uh-huh. Dan, we'll meet you at camp later. I don't want you mixed up in this. All right, let's go, Toto. Come on, Toto. After the Lone Ranger and Tonto left, Dan started back along the trail that passed the Biggs Ranch House. As he passed, he looked toward the ranch house, and his eyes rested on a low wooded ridge about a half a mile behind the ranch buildings. He was suddenly startled to see a small area of smoke and flames on the ridge. Golly, a forest fire on the ridge. If it makes headway with the breeze blowing toward the ranch, it'll burn out the fire. I'll ride in there and warn them. Must be someone at the house, Victor. Come on, Victor. A 
few minutes later, Dan pulled to a stop at the ranch house and dismounted hurriedly. Oh, 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 Victor, oh, steady boy. Well, what's the matter, son? I'm the ranch cook. If you want the boss, he... There's a forest fire on the ridge, and the breeze is blowing this way. Great day. Let me look. Say, you're right. Better get word to the boss. He's out on the range with the cow hands. You better hurry. Where's the boy, Terry? Huh? I saw Terry riding away with that dog from the Norris Ranch. Figured I'd better forget I saw him. I come to think of it, he went along the trail behind the barn that leads up to that wooded ridge. I'll pick up his trail and go after him while you go for Mr. Biggs and the men. Good. I'll see you later. Boy, steady, fella. Come on, Victor. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Sheriff Sam is a boy of ten. He busts right in the robber's den and gets his man because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 That's Cheerios. The cereal shaped like little letter O's. And those O's stand for oats. The good grain Cheerios is made from. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, those good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. You can see that Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So make sure you have a Cheerios breakfast every day. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode across the range toward the water hole where they saw Norris and his men lined up against Cy Biggs and his ranch hands. There they are, Tonto. Come on, fill there! Hank Norris was talking heatedly to Cy Biggs. Now listen, Biggs, I'm a peaceful man. But if any of your men make a move to put up that fence, they'll be shooting. Two can play at that game, Norris. Look, a couple of alhoots coming there. Reckon you hired a couple of gunmen to help you, eh? Oh, wait a minute. Here, cover them in. Hold them. Oh, easy. Hold them. Hold them. Hold them. Hold them. Hold them. If either of you start to draw, you'll get plugged. We have no reason to draw. We want to prevent trouble. <laughs> That's a hot one. I right, get the guns, men, then tie them up. I want to get on with my business here. Right, boy. Oh, you wait, huh? You not tie up the Lone Ranger. Uh, what? The Lone Ranger. Look, Jim, what you say means nothing to me. Now, hold on, boss. He spoke of the Lone Ranger, huh? I've heard of him. Rides a big white stallion, wears a black mask, has an Indian sidekick. He must be the Lone Ranger at that. Yes, I am. Say, I heard about you, too. You help the law. That's right. Well, I'm Hank Norris. That's Cy Biggs there. I came here with my men because I learned... We, uh, we know why you came here, Mr. Norris. Mr. Biggs, it's an unwritten law of the West that water holes are open to all. The reason why you're determined to cause trouble is childish. Outside, hey, hey, wait a minute. Don't call me childish, mister. Don't use that gun. Are oh, you please? Uh, Gully uh, shot the did. gun right from Sy's hand. Sorry I had to do that, Mr. Biggs. Luckily, you're not hurt. Best shooting I ever saw in all my life. Oh, sure was. Now, Mr. Biggs, you objected because I said your actions were childish. That wasn't strong enough. Because your boy loves a certain dog that belongs to Mr. Norris, you not only caused this trouble... But you also have made the boy very unhappy. Uh, how do you know all this? That doesn't matter now. I hey, think... Hey, boss. That... Here comes the cook. Huh? Something must be wrong at the house. Why? Oh, oh, oh. Hey. What is it? Boss, yeah. the ridge behind the house is on fire. Fire. The wind will carry it towards the building. Well, well, go, 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 much go, more. Go, Terry went up to that ridge earlier with the dog. What? I reckon he was afraid that you'd catch him together. Ship and catch his... Well, a young fellow who said that he knew Terry has gone to find him. Hello, he must mean Dan. Uh. We need every man we can get to stop that fire before it reaches your building. My men and I'll go with you. We wouldn't want Cy to lose his ranch buildings in spite of our differences. We've got to find Terry and stop that fire. Let's go. Right. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. Get up there. 
Terry had gone with his pony and rover into the woods on the ridge, where he found a small clearing. Though he had repeatedly been warned never to use matches, he started a campfire. Then, after he and the dog romped happily for a while, Terry fell asleep. Sometime later, he was awakened by Rover tugging at his clothes. Rover, the woods are burning. My pony, he's gone. we got to get away from here quick. Come on, Rover. Terry stumbled in the direction in which he thought he'd find the trail, but the haze of smoke confused him, and he ran, frightened and sobbing, to escape the ever-growing flames. Later, Dan Reed rode up the trail to the ridge. As he entered the smoke-laden woods, he called out repeatedly, Terry! Terry, where are you? Ho, Victor, ho, my ho! Terry! <laughs> Terry's pony with an empty saddle. Ho, ho, boy, ho, ho there! <laughs> I must find Terry. Come on, Victor! <laughs> Terry! Terry! <laughs> that, that dog, he must be with Terry. Come on, Victor. Dan turned Victor from the trail and headed through the woods toward the barking dog. The smoke was drifting through the trees, and he could see flames some distance ahead. The intelligent collie, tugging at Terry's sleeve, had led the boy to a stream and pulled him into it. Terry stood in the water, sobbing, as Dan hurriedly rode up and dismounted. Oh, oh, Victor, hold on. Let me tie you a minute so you won't leave. Terry! Dan, I'm afraid. But Terry brought me here. How good for Rover. Come on, Terry. We'll both ride my horse. We must get away quickly. Let's go. A moment later, Dan untied Victor. Then the two boys mounted. Hey, boy. Hang on, Terry. Come on, Victor. Fearing for Dan's safety, the Lone Ranger left Toto with a ranchman and raced far ahead of them. Faster, big fellow, faster! Come on, Billy! With a fear-stricken boy on Victor's back with him, Dan urged his horse toward the trail, but the flames were rapidly closing off his avenue of escape. Hang on, Terry! We'll get out of this somehow! It was then that Dan heard a welcome cry. Oh, oh, oh Victor, hold oh, oh. In here! We're over here! Dan, where are you? We're here! In here! A, a masked man. He's a friend, Terry. He'll help save us. Hold it, oh, easy, Teddy. Dan, planes are moving swiftly. We won't be able to get back to the trail. There's a stream back there. Head for it. Come on, we must reach it. Then we'll go on from there. Come on, Tilda. Come on, Victor. Oh, 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 oh. to reach the stream in a short time. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, steady. I'll use our handkerchiefs to cover the horse's eyes, Dan. And we'll lead them downstream to the open slope. All right, sir. You stay on Victor, Terry. All right. I'll wet your handkerchief, Terry. Tie it over your mouth and nose. Then we'll get away from here. The air was thick with smoke and blowing upstream. The Lone Ranger knew he must go downstream to reach safety. He soaked their clothing and splashed the horses. Then, after blindfolding the horses... Right, come on, Silver. Come on, Victor. He and Dan started downstream, leading Silver and Victor. The dog, Rover, followed. Finally, they emerged from the trees onto the slope and to safety. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh, Victor. Hold oh, oh. That was a narrow escape. Are you all right, Terry? Yes, but I want to go home. Tell me, Terry. Did you have anything to do with starting that fire? Well, I... Terry... You almost caused the death of all three of us. Not to mention the damage the fire has done. Matches are very dangerous in the hands of children. That's why your father forbid you to use them. I'll remember. I won't use them again. Honest. Good. Yeah, here comes your father now. We'll say nothing about it. Here, 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 man. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! Well, 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 oh. Sonny, it's all right. <laughs> That dog, if it hadn't been for him... The dog saved Terry's life until we could reach him, Mr. Biggs. He led Terry into the stream. Then Dan came and helped us out. 
And then the Lone Ranger came and got us both. I suggest, Mr. Biggs, that the hands get busy and start a backfire before the flames start down this slope. Yes, yeah, sure. Get busy, men. Start a backfire. Right, My mental health. Get busy, all of you. Stop that fire. Right, oh, Mr. Hatch, I reckon I owe a lot to you and the Indian and that young man with you. You owe more to the dog, Rover. The boy might have died up in those flaming woods before either Dan or I reached him, if it hadn't been for Rover. I <laughs> uh, reckon I've been wrong, Dan. When I heard Terry was up there, when I... I went to pieces inside, sort of. From now on, he wants to be with that dog. Well, Daddy, Rover's licking your hand. Well, I'll be doggone. Say, Hank, will you, will you sell him? Nope. But if Terry wants Rover, I, uh, I'll give the dog to him. Oh, I Daddy. figure they belong together. Oh, Daddy, say <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, of course, son. <laughs> and if the cattle don't like his barking at him, well, uh, they just don't have to put up with it, eh? Oh, golly, Rover, <laughs> did you hear that? You're mine. Sorry, Tuttle and I'll go with some of the men and start backfire to the left. While you and Hank stay here and direct the rest of your men, Dan will take Terry back to the ranch house. I'll be glad to, sir. But before you go, mister, yes? I want you and Hank to know I'm sorry about being so honored. Hank, will you, will you shake and be friends? Oh, hmm? with pleasure, sir. <laughs> there. Some of you men go with a masked man and Indian. We'll right. see you later, right. Dan. Let's go, Tonto. Uh -huh. Easy, steady, big fella. Come on, sir! Golly, Dan. Who's that masked man? Hey, let me tell him, Dan. You see, Terry, lad, that's a mighty fine hombre who does plenty of good for folks. He's the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Oh, golly! I'll still Copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to The Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.